Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Lovely to be here. Lovely to see lots of graduates from the Australian universities. And, of course, fantastic to see Adelaide people here. Let's hear that cheer again. Adelaide. Good. I've always been intrigued in the apparently rocky nature of the relationship between Australia and Indonesia, but also the contradiction between the, the, the reporting of the rocky relationship and yet the terribly strong working relationships uh, that, that exist. So, you know, I think at the business level, uh, through all that megaphone discussion that takes place through the media at the top leadership level, Business continues to build relationships. I know that all through that period, the universities were were were, were flat out um, uh, designing new research projects, looking for new linkages, uh, working on on the student flow. And the Australian officials here can probably tell you how often it is all through this time, how often it is a very senior member of the Australian government or the bureaucracy is in Jakarta. Is it what would it be once every fortnight? Somebody is here. Once every fortnight. So even though prime ministers and presidents may be making remarks about each other, uh, the, the, the degree of interaction at the policy level and at the economic level is extraordinary uh, between our economies. Um, but then that's the further contradiction. Having said all that, we seem to rank so low in each other's economic relationships. Why is that? You know, we're next to each other, uh, we're clearly complementary to each other, uh, we're, in, we're geographically in different locations. There's so much to build on that you'd expect that those relationships uh, would be deeper. I think there's a number of things that contribute to that and a number of them are related to policy and the way that we manage ourselves and the way, the way that we regulate our economy, our, our economies. So the, the negotiations that are about to begin, the SEPA negotiations, are a terrific opportunity to clear up some of those impediments. There is a marvellous opportunity to be had here in the negotiations, uh, discussions uh, that, are, that are starting. And in fact, let me stress that point. I would see the SEPA uh, arrangement really as a discussion. We're actually beyond negotiation now in, trade, uh, in, in writing trade agreements. Uh, we're in the stage of, given the nature of the impediments that, that face international business, business, it's a discussion about how we can align the systems and processes in each of our economies. It's not a matter, there will be some negotiation of course, but it's not a matter of saying, you know, you cut your tariff by this much, I'll cut mine by that much. It's going to be about regulation. It's going to be about standards. It's going to be about processes. It's going to be about quality control in the food system. It's going to be about, it's going to be about visas and all of those things. So this is a very different environment. It's not an antagonistic environment. It's not an, it's not a, it's not a. You know, I put something on the table and wait for you to put something on the table. It's got to be a cooperative uh, venture. Second point is, uh, I've been here this week uh, talking in a public lecture series called the sadly lecture series, some of the messages from those discussions. The message from those discussions is that these SEPA negotiations will be more successful uh, as long as they take account uh, of the dramatic changes that are going on in the way that, 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 that business is done. Dramatic changes, revolutionary changes, disruptive changes the way, the way, in the way that... Uh, uh, that business is organised across uh, international borders. Let me, let me test some examples. Let's start with my business, university sector, interna international education. Do you think that's a stable environment? If you were me, I'm the dean of a faculty at Adelaide, I'm responsible for the business school, the economics school, the law school and architecture. We've got about a third of the university students. Uh, do you think... I'm working in a stable environment. I, I'm very concerned about all sorts of competitive and disruptive threats uh, to my working environment. Look, let me give you an example. What's another big uh, shocking disruptive trend that you see uh, happening at the moment? What's, what's one of the most exciting things uh, happening in Indonesia at the, at the moment in terms of the impact of new technology? Gojek, yep, exactly, Gojek. So, you know, put, put Gojek together with e-commerce, completely new retailing system, completely new. Uh, 
having a dramatic effect, again, a dramatic effect on bricks and mortar businesses, traditional uh, retail outlets, where people can shop online, have it delivered in, a, in an integrated way. Now, the businesses on both sides of uh, the relationship are going to be much more interested in the trade negotiation if the negotiators understand the sorts of things that are going on, what might get in the way of building those new businesses. The, the agreement will be much more relevant to the economic relationship if it can at least capture those issues or, 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 or not put new impediments in the way of those, of those issues. So we could go on talking about all sorts of new uh, technologies like this uh, which are going to have a dramatic effect on, um, uh, on the way that business is done. Now this um, question came up today in Jogjakarta when we, we delivered our lecture and it was that the, the two economies should think, make and market together. This way of thinking also captures uh, a, a very important change in the way that international production is organised and that's the evolution of the global value chain. Now, you might have heard of this, uh, this phenomenon. Uh, previously, take an example in manufacturing. Uh, previously, a whole bunch of activities in manufacturing would be done in one place. What we see now is that manufacturing firms are thinking about each component of the process of producing their product and figuring out where the best place to put it is. So a car maker might distribute the production of components all over Southeast Asia and put the assembly in one point, bringing all the parts together, a global value chain. Now, Indonesia, according to all the indicators, is a, is a, is relatively, is a, participates in these global value chains to a relatively low level. The performance indicators are not good. Most of the Im imports, for example, intermediate products that come into Indonesia, they don't leave again. They stay here. Now, one, one specific example of this is the following. Now, one of the most exciting possibilities, I think, in the bilateral relationship relates to services, but, but relates to two types of services. One is health and the other is education. And you'll be thinking, oh, health and education. Can he name two more sensitive sectors in Indonesia than health and education? Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Uh, but I'm going to put a proposal to you now that can be a revolution uh, in the relationship between Australia and Indonesia involving these two sectors. We are fantastically complementary uh, in these two sectors. Uh, the Australian population, uh, uh, relatively high income but also ageing dramatically, uh, has, a, has a tremendous challenge in front of it in delivering health services uh, to itself, uh, having, has a tremendous challenge in front of it to deliver services to people like me who will soon, um, not too soon I hope, but at some <laughs> point um, be looking for someone to give me a hand. Uh, and, uh, and yet Indonesia, um, completely different demographic uh, structure. And yet itself um, looking for uh, uh, higher quality health services, especially hospital services, especially high end, higher end, more value added uh, uh, health services. We know that Lots of Indonesians go offshore uh, to buy health services. The numbers from the health ministry in that respect are very large indeed, billions of dollars. So what about a deal between the two countries? What about a deal that involves uh, the, the sharing of Australian experience into the Indonesian health sector at the same time as the generation of capacity in Indonesia to provide health services into Australia? So education coming one way, services going the other. Uh, the services could be consumed by Australians coming here or could be consumed, provided by Indonesians moving to Australia to do the arrangement. And so uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for a landmark um, arrangement involving uh, a very modern delivery of two critical sectors uh, in our economy. So I look forward to trying to uh, make that point to the, to the officials and let's see uh, how we go. So thanks for your time tonight. It's been a pleasure to be here.